Hello everyone, this is Enea here. In today's tutorial, I will teach you how to create the Celtic Love Knot in Affinity Designer. This knot is made of two interlocked hearts and represents everlasting love between two individuals. Alright, so to get started, we go to File New and we create a new composition. We give it 2000 by 2000 pixels in dimensions. And we click on Create. And then we go to View Guides and we add horizontal and vertical center guides to the composition. And then we'll make sure that snapping, snap to guides, and snap to object bounding boxes and include bounding box midpoints is enabled. So I will explain you how we are going to proceed to draw this figure. In Affinity Design, we have a built-in heart tool, but we cannot adjust it to take the shape that we need in the tool settings. So that means that we are going to proceed another way. So the way that we are going to proceed is first we are going to create a square in the middle of the composition. And then we are going to create the ropes that go in and out of the square with the rounded rectangle tool. So I'll show you how this works. So first we take the rectangle tool, we set the fill to none, we leave the stroke as black, and we set the stroke width to 35 points, so we need a thick stroke for this figure. And then starting from the middle of the composition, and while pressing Ctrl and Shift to expand from the center and keep the proportions one to one, We create a square of around 750 pixels. And then we, here we need sharp corners at the square angles. So the way that we are going to do this, so here at corner, we make sure that it is set to none. And then here we go to the stroke panel. And we set the join to meter join. So this creates the sharp angles that we need. Alright, so then we are going to create the ropes that go in and out of the square. So we take the rounded rectangle tool to do that. We leave the fill and stroke settings as they are. And then we go ahead and we draw a rectangle. And then with the move tool, we position it in such a way that its lower extremity matches the horizontal axis and its top extremity matches the top extremity of the square. And then we are going to adjust it so that its right and left extremity are more circular. So here we are going to increase the percentage. So as you can see, that makes it more circular. And then we're going to expand it. So the rounded rectangle must be centered on the vertical axis. And then while holding shift to expand from both sides, we expand it until the rounded part lies outside of the square. So we need it to be like this on both sides. So this is going to be the first rope that comes in and out of the square. And the next step is that we're going to remove the rounded part on the left. So the way that we're going to do this, we press Ctrl A to select both elements. And then we go to Layer, Expand Stroke. What this does is that this converts the stroke object into fill. So as you can see now there are fill. We need to do this operation, otherwise when we remove the part on the left, the program will add the stroke here. We don't want that, that is why we convert to fill before we do that. Alright, so then we go here, we take the Shape Builder tool, we set the action to minus, and we remove the part here. So that is what we need. And then the next step is that we are going to create a rounded rope that comes in and out here. So the way that we do this, we select the rounded rectangle, we press Ctrl J to duplicate it. And here in the transform panel, we set it angle to 90 degrees. And then we take the duplicated rounded rectangle and we position it in such a way that its bottom and right extremity match the bottom and right extremity of the square. So it must look like this. And the next step is that we are going to need two rounded ropes that come in and out here on the bottom left side. So the way that we are going to do this we select both rounded rectangles while holding shift and then we press Ctrl J to duplicate them. And then we go here to enable transform origin. We set the rotation center in the middle of the composition. And then we set the rotation angle to 180 degrees to have them on the other side of the figure. So it must look like this. And then we're going to rotate all objects. So this part here comes to the top. So we press Ctrl A to select all elements. And here in the transform panel, to the rotation angle, we subtract 45 degrees 
So this bring this part here to the top. So the figure must be now positioned like this. And the next step is that we are going to connect the parts that we need connected together. But before we do that, so make sure to have unselected the figure by pressing escape. And we go here to the color panel. We set the stroke to none and we set the field to black. We need to do this, otherwise when we connect the objects together with the Shape Builder tool, the program is going to add a stroke and we don't want that. We need the objects to be field only. And then we press Ctrl A to select all elements. And we take the Shape Builder tool, Action to Plus and Clean Up to None. And we are going to connect the objects that we need connected together. So we start here with the elements on the top side of the square. We connect these elements here. And then we're going to connect the elements here on the bottom side of the square, like this, until here. And then we're going to connect the ropes that come in and out of the square. So we connect these three elements here. Then these three elements here. So it does not appear connected because there are still objects underneath that we need to remove afterwards. Then we connect these three elements here. These three elements here. And finally, these three elements here in the middle. And then we take the Move tool. And here in the layer panel, there are three objects that were not used when we connected the object with the Shape Builder tool. So we select all three of them with, uh, while holding Shift. And then we delete them. So now the figure must look like this. And lastly, we are going to create the gaps between the element, and we are going to do so with the Contour tool. So we press Ctrl A to select all elements. We take the Contour tool, and here at Contour Type, we set it to Meter, because we need to preserve the sharp angles here at the square angles of the square. And then we are going to decrease the radius. What this does is that it shrinks the object and creates the gap between them. So we are going to set the radius to minus 7, so as you can see, this creates the gap between the objects. And lastly, I will set the fill color to a dark green. I think it looks good on this knot, on this particular knot. All right, so that was it for this tutorial. You learned how to create the Celtic Love Knot in Affinity Designer. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Affinity Designer tutorials in the future. And until then, see you next time. Bye.